the, the excuse that we always hear is, hey, you know, I can't go out and seek knowledge because I've got exams, I've got this. Or the guys who are seeking knowledge, they don't do anything in terms of, you know, sorting out their own personal kind of situation. Allah is not disobeyed except, except through ignorance. Yeah. Many of us think, ah, oh, someone's iman is low. No, mm. it's not the iman being low. If this person doesn't know who Allah is mm. I've just been on it. I'm a 30 year old man I've got grey hairs on my beard I've got a job I work You know But I'm saying If I'm able to do it So can you Alhamdulillah <laughs> Wa salatu wa salamu Ala rasulillah Amma ba'd Assalamu alaikum Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Brothers and sisters Welcome back to another episode Of MXP The Muslim Experience Podcast Today we have Ustad Abdul Ahad Joining us as the guest today How are you doing today? Alhamdulillah Khair Not too bad So uh, Sheikh Talib We've got lots to discuss you know, and I think people are going to really benefit from this discussion. We're going to, inshallah, talk about uh, the virtues of seeking knowledge. And we're also going to talk about seeking secular knowledge because Allah Mubarak, you're a person who is quite accomplished in terms of secular studies. You've done your degree and you've Something completed your like master's that. as well, right? MashaAllah, tabarakallah. So that's that's quite unique. And then at the same time, you're pursuing Islamic knowledge as well, where you've memorized the Quran, Allah Mubarak, and, you know, you're pursuing... You know your Islamic studies, which is something that people find quite hard to kind of get their hands around. They, the, the, the excuse that we always hear is, "Hey, you know, I can't go out and seek knowledge because I've got exams, I've got this." Or the guys who are seeking knowledge, they don't do anything in terms of you know sorting out their own personal kind of situation. Uh, so we'll talk about that, inshallah, ta'ala, and we'll talk about how to you know kind of you know some benefits with regards to how to traverse the university. But we have a, a sunnah here at our podcast, which is that we will start off by talking. About how we met the first time we met. So, do you have a recollection of that? And you might have a different story to me. Sunnah Imraniya. When was the first time we met? So, there's, there's, I think there was a few times we met indirectly. Yeah. The first time we actually conversed was in the masjid. In the masjid, and there was that class going on. Do you remember which uh, class it was? I can't remember. No, what's the figure? It was right. No, what's the figure? time. Um, yeah, I think it was then, but I don't think we should mention what we spoke about. <laughs> that <time. laughs> you don't want to mention that. <laughs> so it's a bit um, unusual yeah, conversation. Yeah. I won't mention it, inshallah ta'ala. But I remember I'd seen him in the class for a good few weeks. And we actually, I think the most we ever said was salam to each other. So, and I turned to him one day and I just asked him something. I think and we should keep that conversation. Yeah, we'll keep, we'll keep it confidential. But it, it must have been strange for you, right? Because it's like, it's so, not the yeah. first thing that you... <laughs> Did you ever ask? Did you ask the it was strange enough because we never actually spoke. Yeah. You never asked me my name, how I was doing, nothing like that. <laughs> but inshallah, you hoped good and it you was, had good intentions. Was, the thing is, it was in the back of really good assumptions. Alhamdulillah. You know what I'm saying? So that's how it was. Alhamdulillah. It was a good thing anyway. It was a good thing. It wasn't that you never you mentioned anything bad. So inshallah. Alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. So we met before that though. We met before that? I think we've met in terms of uh, seeing each other, yeah. and been to places, etc. Yeah, but mutual friends. In terms of physically speaking, yeah, that was, was, the, first was the first time. That was the first time. Yeah. Was the first time. Yeah. And uh, Sheikh Mashallah Yusuf, Allah back, you know, you teach Quran, you know, you have students, Mashallah, some of them are about to complete their hifz, right? Mm. Nah. So, um, uh, you know, um, what's it been like for you over the over, over the last year? Because Masha, you're a student, but you're also teaching as well, and you've worked, actually got some students, Alam Barik, who I think two of them are about to finish the Quran. Mm, no. when, is, when is it happening? Yeah, so the class we started is actually two and a half years ago. It started on, of course, Madras to Mani with Ustad Ahmad Hassan. The way it started, I think, is very important, or shall I say, it deserves to be mentioned. Yeah. So I, one day, it was when Sheikh Abdurrahman was the Imam of the Masjid. So we came, it was Salat al-Isha time And then he just randomly told me, look, please lead the Salah So I led the Salah I said, Assalamu alaikum, Assalamu alaikum And then out of the blue, it was unexpected It was not planned, not rehearsed, anything like that He got up, went to the microphone And then he said, Assalamu alaikum, wa barakatuh Brothers and sisters, inshallah, there's going to be a new Hivd program Two-year Hivd program, inshallah, where you finish the Quran, X, Y, and Z and I was thinking, wait a minute, what's going on here? Then he said, inshallah, that I had to be teaching it as well. So please sign up, everybody line up, X, Y, and Z. I said, fuck, we didn't agree on me teaching. You never told me or anything like that. So I locally had brothers, they uh, they lined up outside the office. and uh, Big line. Brother, yeah, it was a really big line. Uh, of course, he uh, took the um, Allah, very good illustrations, Allah. everything. Yeah, nah. And alhamdulillah, that class, it started then. The actual, so he told me make a video, promo video, poster, got made, whatever. That class, it started in April 2018, I believe. Mm -hmm. So it's two years and around four or five months so far. 
Allah the class started with around 50 sign-ups approximately Then as you know in the field of da'wah everything just you know Gets less and less, gets and, less. less and less So alhamdulillah we have 13, 14 students who the lowest person I believe is maybe on the 6th or 7th juz Allah, but, but that's still a substantial amount to, oh no, to, definitely, definitely. To, so you've the retained class, more than twenty percent of the students. Oh yeah, no, no, definitely. The class was divided into those that didn't know how to read, and then those who knew how to read but didn't memorize anything apart from juz amma, mm -hmm. and then there were those that had like three or four juz under their belt. The person who's now on the sixth, seventh juz, which is the lowest person in the class, hifdan, uh, they started on nuraniya, so they actually couldn't read. Wow, at all. Yeah. Allah Um the average, the class, mashallah, there's some students on Surah Tawbah, Surah Furqan. Start having uh, started from the back. From zero, from the back now. Um, surah Nisa, we have Surah, uh, surah Isra, Ankabut, Sajda, Hazab. So mashallah, it's a good cohort. Where, where, where is he? Ghafir, huh? Yeah, Ghafir, something like that. <laughs> uh, like he mashallah, he's been so for a few months. Few, few he's weeks. been away and he's kind really? of left and come back. Really? And left and come back. Yeah, we'll yeah, have some words sure. after, inshallah. The shahid min al kalam ala kulli hal is the point is the cohort is a very unique cohort as well. Mm -hmm. So I normally despise hate. Uh, sorry, I despise. Me, I don't know what cohort kids. means. Cohort like a group. Dufa. Oh, okay. okay. Like a, okay. You know, a group. Yeah. That cohort finishes A new cohort comes Okay I see. So just a group of students like I love you. So this cohort is very unique In the sense that Personally I despise teaching kids When I say kids It's very of course uh, It's subjective But I don't like teaching to anyone That physically doesn't Control themselves Yeah A student who's not going to Come to the class themselves uh, A student who doesn't have That ragba In fact should I Come say, on time Do the you know, homework exactly. Muraja'ah Anyone that their parents Telling them Go to class Why are you not doing your work Don't bring them to me I don't want to teach them I don't want to get any There's them, other teachers That will deal with that There's other teachers That will But me 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 Yeah I'm more of an adult Student Yeah I'm teacher. not going to Hold your hand walk I'm not going to hold your hand So I look at like this cohort One of the reasons Why I'm really Really inclined towards them And I even continued it Because you know As a teacher Sometimes you You know Feel like I don't want to Teach them mm. anymore And you get a bit Disappointed And X, Y, and Z What's been pulling me is The students Are generally 18, 19, we have maybe one 17 year old, but he's really mature, Allahumma Barik, really mature. Um, and the rest are 23, 24, 26, 23, 22, 20, etc. They are a mixture of university students, some now doing their masters, some are college students, sixth form, etc. The point I'm getting to is these students have managed to do something which I I'm an advocate of I really really push And I really am someone who Like I really uh, you know Believe in the philosophy of Do your secular studies But don't be someone Who completely puts to a side Islamic studies Of course So go to uni Labats Like he memorized the Quran as well Go to uni Labats Learn Arabic You can do it Go to uni Start memorizing mutun Learn books Learn tawheed Learn fiqh etc Do them simultaneously So right now They are a people They are a group of students Who are a practicalization Of the theory that I'm trying to push uh, Which is to you know Do both of them together So two of them are currently The two brothers mm -hmm. Who are 22 and 21 I believe If I got your age wrong I'm really sorry But they're sim you know, similar ages But one year difference They both go to university one studies economics and the other one studies uh, pharmacy. They just both finished and they're now both, one of them just finished his master's, the other is doing his master's now. And they started on the same day. They started on Juz Tabarak. They knew Juz Amal already. So only knew two Juz or Juz and a half. One Juz and a half. And they are going to finish. They're now on Surah Baqarah. I think the 10th, no, no, 20th page now. Allah and they're both going to finish on the same day. Allah The two Sudanese so, brothers. Two Sudanese brothers. Muhammad and Mukhtar. Allah Mubarak. So, um, mashallah, that, that class is a class which people should look up to, people should aspire it's just, you know, to it's, be up to. It's, 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 so that's, that's actually quite, pro quite profound because in, in two, in two you, and you have just what, two classes a week or one class a week? At the time, you have two classes a week. Two classes a week, a week yeah, two classes. But, but Quran is just one, right? No, so, it's two, so it used to be two classes, but now with COVID and that, we made it one day a week one where day a they week. just read to me their five, six, seven look pages. Look at that, it's just, it's just two times a week over two and a half years. Uh, you know, it takes about... An hour a day, you know, yeah. hour and a half. No. Uh, if you really want to push it, which is nothing. 
I mean, you know, when you spend an hour on Quran, I I I I I notice something. You know, when you spend time worshiping Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, it's never time lost. You know, there's a few times where I think to myself, you know, let me um let me not do this sunnah act today because I'm a bit under pressure. Mm. And when I on on the day when I leave off that sunnah act, I realize I'm not any more productive. Mm. Like the ibadah actually brings barakah in your 100%, 100%. time. And there's actually one day where I was so tired, like I was shattered, mm. and I and I had so much to do. And I said, you know what, I've got a, I've got things that I need to get done. Maybe I should, I, you know, the thought I said maybe you know I, I won't go to the masjid and pray today. Maybe I won't do this today. And I said to myself, you know what, let me tr- let me try it out. And I actually said, I'm gonna go and pray in the masjid. Mm. I was shattered. I don't know where the energy came from. I was hungry. It's just Allah was just putting barakah in my yeah. day. So, so it's an investment, you know, for you to spend an hour a day. It's not taken away from your time. Mm. Wallahi, it, w- it, would, it would actually bring more barakah in your time. Mm. And to do it over a period of two and a half years, and now they what? It's about to finish. It's and it's, it's not just that, because they also do Arabic with you as well. They don't, but all of the other students do. Yeah, yeah, because they, they know Arabic, Arabic anyway. They already know Arabic. So music, and, and Allah Mubarak, these guys only started Arabic about six months ago, right? Uh, now I'd say you know, it's, Now it's around a year or so About a year About 11 months but you, months. No but I'm talking about The grammar side of things The grammar was Three, four, four months ago Four months ago like that, Okay yeah. So for people who are unfamiliar Studying Arabic language And grammar are, Even though they're Similar But, but they're very different as well Like a person yeah, who studied language yeah. If he says He's not going to know yeah, So Obviously I'm with him every day So he keeps me up to date I'm shocked Allah Mubarak like I heard some of the the messages, the voice notes, uh, Amir and the brothers, they're doing Arab, they're trying to do Arab. Oh, Allah Mubarak, I was May like, Allah they, yeah, they really are doing so well. I heard Suleiman, <laughs> he's mm-hmm. doing the Arab as well. And, I, and, I, and, it, and the reason I mentioned this is because just to echo what you said, this is actually a manifestation, a practical manifestation of this theory that you can be mm. a person who's working, who's got a job, like Alam Barak Suleiman has a corporate job, he works in IT. If he doesn't want him to be mentioned, we can bleep his name up. The point mm. is that, you know, we, you know, they've got these jobs, they are university, they're doing well, graduates, masters, mm. and they're memorizing the Quran, about to finish learning Arabic, and learning other sciences as well. Mm. So I'm just mentioning that to reinforce that this is what you're saying is true. I've actually seen it myself, Allah mm. Yeah, so inshallah, something we'll come on to afterwards is the notion of every single Muslim being a student of knowledge. Mm. Remind me to mention that statement later on, inshallah. Okay. Ta'ala, so we can elaborate on it. Sure. I won't elaborate on it now. But the students that I teach Arabic, mm-hmm. most of them are in my Quran class anyway, mm-hmm. but they're divided into personal trainers, Allah pharmacists, um, is there a medicine student in our class? Anyways, biomed. Um, I think you got a biomed. Yeah, we have biomed. Yeah. We have a what's the uh, psychology? Allah Psychologist. Allah. He's doing a master's now. In fact, <laughs> the only guy who goes to uni is him. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, we've got serious geologist. Yeah, we have a geologist. Is, well. The geologist got a master's as well, right? I heard. No, no. Um. So the point I'm getting to is We have a variation of students That are doing their secular studies yeah. But I also have managed to Change their mentality To actually lean towards You can do both Don't sleep on it So remind me about the statement later on inshallah, mm-hmm. About every single Muslim being a student of knowledge And, and we, we, we can, can go into it now I'm happy, to go, I'm happy to dive into it now inshallah Yeah inshallah khair So the main thing So I have a notion I have a message mm-hmm. I have a you know philosophy Whatever you want to call it that I think every single Muslim should be a student of knowledge. Mm-hmm. What do I mean by that? Someone who's a talibul ilm, mm-hmm. we normally confine that word, student of knowledge, talibul ilm. Someone who, number one, has failed in life. Mm-hmm. Someone who, you know, no, no, normally we do. <laughs> yeah, we do I don't believe that. But yeah. I'm saying normally what people tend to do is, oh, this person, you know, a student of knowledge. He didn't get GCSEs or send him to Medina. There you go. He didn't get GCSEs. Make him memorize the Quran. There you go. Send him. But parents do this, of course. Yeah. He's the one that's failed in the, you know, this guy's a doctor. The, you know, younger brother's going into uni. The sister's a doctor. This person, dentist. He didn't do well. So let's send him to, you know, learn the Yeah, exactly. So number one is confined to someone who's, you know, Failed in their secular studies Secondly It's confined to someone Who has to go abroad And live a Zahid life Never get married um, Or if you get married You know Just get married When you're 35, 40 With grey hairs etc Once again Which is not a bad thing At all Whatsoever 
Uh, we see someone who can't, you know, do business, for example. He can't be a personal trainer as well. He can't be someone who's interested in health. He can't be someone who's a surgeon. And he's a sheikh as well at the same time. We have this mindset ala kulli hal of confining a student of knowledge to these connotations. If they're right or wrong is a different topic in terms of who says them and do we believe in etc. I think they're ubatil personally. Yeah. I think it shouldn't be like that. I think most decent people will be that, you know, think like that as well. But I have a philosophy which is, Akhi, someone who is a doctor, and I mean it, if you're a doctor, you can be a student of knowledge. You can be someone who memorizes the Quran, learns Arabic, you you know, learn your aqidah, your tawheed, your fiqh, you can learn mustalah, hadith, hadith, etc. You just embark on the journey. You can do it. It's not impossible. All you need is manage your time. Number one, have high aspirations. Number two, and just find a teacher who can direct you towards it. Yeah. If we look at the example of our parents, our parents, 50 years of age, 55 years of age, 60 years of age, I'm talking about the older generation, mm -hmm. our generation of parents, 90% of them are not very well grounded when it comes to religious studies or religious aspect of life. So they will be the cab drivers, they will be, I don't know, own a little shop, whatever, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera, but they don't know how to pray salah. They don't know how to do wudu properly. And I've experienced it. I've had Somali mums ask me questions and I'm thinking, well, my mum asked me questions, may Allah bless her, that sometimes you answer, but it's just like, it's quite a simple question. You know, uh, likewise, our parents, my dad, he would ask me something. Same problem with your dad. Most parents, had the older generation, and by the way, which I think is very understandable Because our parents, they came I don't know about the Pakistanis are different actually You guys might not have that excuse But Somalis have the excuse where We came, we're not second generation We are here We've refugees. come As refugees And the cohort I use that again Or should I say the The, the batch The, the era, batch. yes the batch Yes, The batch that are going to be the educated ones etc Are us mm. They however weren't educated So they've come to a country where they don't understand the language, they don't understand the system, they get a letter through the letterbox, they tell their son, please read it for me. Mm. They don't know anything about it. So they had to kind of slack on the Islamic side of things due to maybe fear of surviving in this country. Mm. So what did they do? They just mainly focused on work money. and getting money and getting their children to have the ability to learn both their Islamic studies and their secular studies. So to give them opportunities. So anyway, long story short, I've kind of went off the topic, but... Our parents are like that If we look at the example of our parents If our parents who are in that situation right now Who are not very well in their Islamic studies of things They don't know Nahu, they don't know Saraf, They don't know, uh, you know Fiqh, they don't know Aqidah They don't know these things to a good level, right? I'm not telling them to stop being a cab driver, nope I'm not telling you book a ticket, go to Saudi Arabia, live a Zahid life, nope If our parents, whilst they were cab drivers Whilst they were, you know, owners of chicken shops, whilst they were bin men, whilst they were whatever jobs they were doing, if they studied once or even twice a week, which is what the brothers that I'm teaching now are doing, and they started even at a later age, because we're also going to speak about, you know, people studying and seeking knowledge at a later age in their life. Let's say they started at the age of 30. Now they're 55, 60 years of age. That's 25 to, six, to 30 years. Of studying twice a week These guys have learned You know Nahu is at a decent level In four or five months How well would they be In their studies Does that mean They stop being cab drivers No Do your subhis Whilst you're driving Listen to a lecture Whilst you're driving Listen to a dars Whilst you're driving When you come home Do subhis Do your revision With your children Go so to it's one it's class it's a week Explain subhis To the ones Subhis yeah So you know so Somalis mainly They uh, revise Quran together by reading one verse. So they say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Adbas, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, Malik, and Medin. They do three, four, five years of reviewing the Quran like that. You've got a local masjid, find a teacher, stick with him, go through a syllabus with tadarruj in all the sciences. Do you think, I don't know, Imran, your no, personal I, opinion, do you think that's possible? No, I think, I think. Like, what level would our parents be at? Well, I'm they, thinking they, close you, to you scholarship. Know what, you know, is the first thing that people need to understand is that you can, as an as an adult, seek knowledge. I think it was Salih ibn, ibn, ibn uh, Kaysan. Mm. Salih ibn Kaysan, if I'm not mistaken. Um, he started seeking knowledge at the age of 90. Now, there are different narrations that mention he started seeking a bit, a bit earlier. 
but none of them mention before the age of 60. Allahu Akbar. So the minimum age where he started seeking knowledge and he became a scholar and an alim was that age. People talk, say, you know, all oh, these are tales of old or whatever have you. I mean, yeah, they are, but we've even seen this in contemporary times. Imam Khalid al Azhari. Mm. Uh, people don't know, you know, the mm. the great scholar of the Arabic language, the Nahwi. Um, he actually used to be, uh, he used to serve tea for the students in Azhar. Maruf. And on occasion, so maruf, huh? he poured the tea onto one of the students accidentally. He spilled it, and the tea is hot. So the students said to me, Jahil, what are you doing? Pour the tea properly. And then he saw knowledge. Yeah, and he was 40 years old, by the way. He's 40 plus. He said to himself, Subhanallah. Look, I'm being humiliated, you know, and it made it made him feel like I can be. I'm better than this. I I am I'm more than this. Look at these students; they're younger, but they're so bad mannered. And he became a scholar of the Arabic language. One day we have Sheikh Muqbil, who's just even closer to our time, who started seeking knowledge after the age of thirty. Well, like even from the companions, Salman al Farisi, radiallahu anhu, was significant of significant age by the time he came mm. to the Prophet Islam. You know, he's from Persia, he left, he went, met different monks, came to Medina, was there as a slave for how many years? And then finally the Prophet Isaac came. He was old now by the time the Prophet he'd grown now. But he was in search of that knowledge, that that truth. Where is it? Mm. So age shouldn't be a reason to ever hold anyone back from seeking knowledge. Do you see? And nor should business or work be a reason. I mean, Imam Ash-Shafi'i had today he'll be a doctor. Mm. Imam Shafi'i said the only the only knowledge science after after, Islamic, uh, after Islamic, sciences. Islamic sciences is the science of medicine, as in that he prays. And he was he was a doctor. He was he was he was he was he had the knowledge of being. Even look at Ibn Qayyim when you look at his kitab Tibb al Nabawi, mm. like the man was a doctor. Do <laughs> you see? Sorry. Ibn Taymiyyah was a polymath. He knew he knew he knew mathematics. He knew the sciences. Uh, I'm talking about like the natural sciences. Mm. He was a polymath. Sahih, 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 uh, you have Imam Abu Hanifa who was a merchant. And they had, you know, mm. Imam Albani, okay, he maybe didn't have what you would call a white collar job, mm. but he was a wafs. So, he had a, yeah, he yeah, had a profession. Absolutely. And he would, he would every day, he would fix watches, he would make the money that he needed for the day, he'd stop. And he was an expert watchmaker, by the way. You know, scholars, oh, when they do something, they do it with precision. Oh, he, you know, and then he'd, and he'd just go into his books. The point is it can be done It can be done The issue is That And I think this is one of the reasons Why it's not done And I think it's, it would be travesty If why we didn't mention that? it Is that People Just don't value Islamic knowledge As much as they value Secular knowledge That's, so that's what it is That's so true Very true I think that's one thing The fact that they don't value it Is one thing But I also think People not knowing That they can actually Do both Yeah Some people think If I go through the secular route I comp like I won't have time. I won't be physically able to do it, etc., etc. So I think that's that's another reason. But when you look at the nusus al if you look at the Quran and the Sunnah, the value that knowledge has and all that stuff, I don't really think we need to mention it that much. To be mm. honest, look at the story of uh, Sulaiman alayhi salam when uh, the jinns, you know, when uh, Bilqis was coming and they said, "Oh, we need to bring the throne first and all that other stuff." The jinns they said we'll bring the throne at this time. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned a man mm. who and brought the throne before the him. Ifrit. The Ifrit. The Ifrit. But Allah mentioned a person after that. Uh. But he didn't mention his name. Yeah. He acknowledged the scripture. He just said, He said, He said, He said, He said, Look at also Dawood alayhi salam and uh, Sulaiman alayhi salam Allah said So that was an honor of him was an honor. he was described from his knowledge There you go He was described from his knowledge His name until now the scholars they say we don't know who he was They mentioned that there's some names and X, Y and Z But there's no actual trace of who on earth this man was But the only thing that he was known for Was knowledge Was that knowledge he was given Allah said وَلَقَدْ أَتَيْنَا دَاوُودَ وَسُلَيْمَانَ ilma. We gave Dawood and Sulaiman knowledge وَقَالَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي فَضَّلَنَا عَلَى كَثِيرٍ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Glory and uh, uh, praise belongs to the one who virtued us over, mm -hmm. not mankind, over the other believers. SubhanAllah. Look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned that he bear witnesses, شَهِدَ اللَّهُ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا هُوَ So Allah mentioned that he bear witnesses, that there's no Lord worthy of worship except he. Allah mentioned two other groups. The witness is on the greatest thing, by the way. Nah, the witness nah, is on the kalimatul tuhid, la ilaha illallah. Sahih, sahih. And with him, he took 
With him, they, he mentioned two others that along with Allah, they also bear witness, a true witnessing that there is no Lord worthy of worship except him. He said, وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ The angels. The angels also 100% حَقِيقَةً They witness that Allah is the only one worthy of worship except he. The third group, we can't be angels. And we can't be Allah either. Allah, he mentioned right after the angels, وَأُولُوا الْعِلْمِ قَائِمًا بِالْقِسْطِ And the people of knowledge. So technically someone can't actually understand who Allah is. Like someone can't have you know fear of Allah. Someone can't know لا إله إلا الله without actually learning as well. Allah mentions in many other places, uh, you know, but <laughs> knowledge is very important. <laughs> Allah lifted <laughs> the believers in rank of uh, the rest of mankind and from the believers, the ones who have the highest rank is the is the people of knowledge. The only ones who truly fear Allah the way he deserves to be feared is the ones who have knowledge. You know, there's an amazing thing I wanted to touch on. It just came to our mind now, subhanAllah. I didn't even know we we're going to talk about virtues of knowledge. But, so one of the things I wanted to mention is people in university have a big link to sinning uh, because of the environment they're in. Yeah. There's something very, very profound that Abdullah ibn Abbas, I believe, mentioned, or is Abdullah ibn Sudusi. It was one of the Abdullahs anyway. But Qatad ibn Da'amat al Sudusi, along with Ikrimah and Mujahid ibn Jabbar, they also agreed on him, with him, sorry, on this meeting. He said a very profound statement. He said, Ma Allahu illa bi jahlin. Subhanallah. Something along those lines. Okay. Yeah. Allah is not disobeyed except, except through ignorance. Yeah. Many of us think, ah, oh, someone's iman is low. No, mm. it's not the iman being low. It's this person doesn't know who Allah is. Mm. If you really understood who Allah is, you wouldn't be doing a certain sin. Mm. So he said, there's no other reason. It's not because your iman is low. It's not because you're feeling sad. It's not because you're bored either. People say, oh, you know, I'm sinning because I have loads of time. No, it's because you don't know Allah. Mm. He brings a verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, إِنَّمَا التَّوْبَةُ عَلَى اللَّهِ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السُّوءَ بِجَهَالًا ثُمَّ يَتُوبُونَ مِنْ قَرِيبٍ فَأُولَئِكَ يَتُوبُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلِيمٍ حَكِيمًا Indeed, accepting repentance is upon Allah for those who, when they commit sin due to ignorance, mm. بِجَهَالَةٍ اَيْ بِسَبِبِ جَهَالَتِهِمْ Due to their ignorance. So Allah mentioned that these people are committing sins due to ignorance. The people who do this and then straight away they seek the repentance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they seek the forgiveness, uh, the forgiveness of Allah, Allah will forgive them. Mm-hmm. You know when you analyze the rest of the Quran, this theme of ignorance, ignorance and sin go hand in hand. Yeah. Look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. In, to, in maybe three, four other places. Uh, one things that come to mind now is um, Your Lord has written upon Himself mercy. Same verse. And another place. Same thing. Look at the story of Yusuf so, salam. So, so قال رب السجن أحب إلي مما يدعونني إليه وإلا تصرف عني كيدهن أصب إليهن وأكون من الجاهلين. Look at Nuh عليه السلام. So just explain that to them. Ah, sorry. So it was in the context of zina. Naam. You know, Yusuf. He said, yeah. he said, if Allah, you don't divert me from their plotting and their planning. I will fall victim to what they are calling, calling me to, to Aida Zina. And I will become Jahili from the, the ignorant ones. ones. Look at Nuh alayhi salam. When Nuh alayhi salam, he was, you know, uh, when, when, when Allah was saving them from the ship, from, from drowning, Allah told them, Irkabu fiha. I know, uh, Fingi, what's his name? Nuh said, Irkabu fiha, bismillahi, majariha wa mursaha. Come on the ship, guys, because he's going to drown. There, his son, he didn't. And what did he say? He said, سأوي إلى جبل يعصمني من الماء. I'm gonna go and seek shelter in the, in mountain. the mountain so you can protect me from this. He said, "القارة لا عصم اليوم من أمر الله." There's no protection from this thing. It's come quick. He didn't know. Then Nuh عليه السلام started, you know, asking Allah to help him with his son. He said, "إن بني من أهلي وإن وعدك الحق وأنت أحكم الحاكمين." Oh Allah, he's from my sons. Please, you know, help us out, etc. What did Allah reply? قَالَ إِنَّهُ لَيْسَ مِنْ أَهْلِكَ إِنَّهُ عَمَلٌ غَيْرُ صَالِحٍ 
واستعن به فلا تسألني ما ليس لك به علم إني أعظك أن تكون من الجاهلين He said he's not from your children This act he's doing is something which is not righteous So O oh Nuh Don't ask me about something that you have no knowledge of I advise you That if you don't listen to me You are going to become from the ignorant Sin, ignorance So the point I'm trying to get to is ala kulli hal, Sins, they stem from ignorance <laughs> Now when someone's in university The situation's not easy Allah is hard You're jahil You don't know about your Lord The reason why sins occur Is through jahil yeah. And the environment you're in With atheism that occurs And all of these other things You need to equip yourself yeah. Before you go And yeah. you really need to learn your religion yeah. Do it before you go Simultaneously as well Because it's a very very dangerous matter yeah. um, and, you, and you know Like from Like one may say What's the connection Between knowledge and sins well, I, when you seek knowledge of this deen, the greatest knowledge within the deen is knowledge of Allah. Tawheed, yeah. Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Al-ilmu al-a'la, al-ilmu bil-a'la. No. The highest knowledge is the knowledge of the most high. Mm-hmm. So the first Allah. thing you want to learn about is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you learn about him, you learn about his name, his attributes. You learn that he's watching you. Everything that you're doing, he's, it's recorded. You know, you're never alone in a gathering except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also watching over that gathering. You know, it, it, it inherits inside of a person's heart, khasha, fear, muraqaba to Allah, this, that Allah is observing me, he's watching me. This doesn't come when you don't know him. And the greatest thing in Islam is la ilaha illallah. And even before Allah told you to come with la ilaha illallah, he commanded you, fa'alam. No. Command you, have knowledge, fa'alam. Anna hu la ilaha illallah, wastaghfir li dhanbik. Have knowledge of La ilaha illallah and seek knowledge, forgiveness for your sins. But La ilaha illallah comes first. What benefit is there is you seeking forgiveness for your sins? If you don't know La ilaha illallah, if a Christian comes today and he seeks forgiveness for his sins, it's not going to benefit him. You need to come with Tawheed first. Mm-hmm. And then when you come with Tawheed, you come with La ilaha illallah. And you, you know, you can now make, then now your sins will be forgiven. Mm-hmm. So people always say, oh, I'm sitting, you know, I, I want to change. Everyone knows that's 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 the difference. You know, one of the difference between innovation, bid'ah, and sins. Is that a person who does bid'ah doesn't realize he doesn't realize he's wrong. This is wrong. But the one who does sins, he knows. Sorry. His shahwa, he knows this is this bad. You know, zina is bad. I mean, he's doing it every day. He's smoking drugs. The girl, she's doing zina. She's taking drugs. Listen to they, but they know it's wrong and they wish that they could change, but they don't realize why they can't change. They're trying to they're trying to bring about tawbah for themselves. They're not even able to do it because they didn't come with la ilaha illallah first. Mm-hmm. But la ilaha illallah cannot come except without knowledge. That's how Allah said, Fa'lam have knowledge. And no la ilaha illallah. There is no worthy to worship and truth except for him. Li mm-hmm. and that's why Imam Bukhari Rahmanullah ta'ala he took this ayah and he chaptered it in his Sahih. Sahih, sahih. You know? Yeah, Babu Al Ilmu Qabal Qawli Al-Amal. Knowledge comes before statements and actions. Well, I, you know. We can sit here and talk about the virtues of knowledge for so long. There's just one ayah, well, two that I'd like to mention, inshallah, that I th- think will be a travesty also to not mention, to show you the importance of this. Wallahi. You know when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about us coming into this world, mm. and the first time we entered in this world, the first time we take a breath, how did Allah describe us? He said, Wallahu akhrajakum min ummahatikum la ta'lamuna shay'a. Allah took you out of the wombs of your mothers, Okay, we're born now. We come into existence. What's the first word Allah could have described? He could have described us as weak. He could have described us as humans. He could have described us as, you know, in any state. But the first state Allah described us with is the absence Ignorance. of knowledge. Ignorance. So as to show us, okay, this is your deficiency. And this is what you now must work on perfecting. Another ayah Allah says, إِنَّهُ كَانَ ذَا لُمَنْ Jahula, the state of the human being, the default of every human being is oppression, oppression and yeah, Jahulan. Very <laughs> ignorant. Very ignorant. And then straight away, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after mentioning that you don't know. So as to remind you, this is your deficiency. This is the thing that you need to correct. This is what you need to spend your life's mission sorting out. Knowledge of Allah, by the way. This is knowledge of Allah, his deen, his sharia. Then right after that, he mentioned to you the tools. The tools of how that you would seek knowledge. Your sam, your hearing, your basar, your seeing, and then your heart. Your, your, where all of your uh, pondering and understanding and where you take everything in. Because because there's, the knowledge is taken in through the, through the ears and the eyes. And then what? 
then it's it pondered upon, then it manifests inside the heart, and then it comes onto the limbs. limbs. And you know what's powerful here is a fact that I took from one of uh, my mashayikh. He mentioned, notice Allah mentioned sam before basar, hearing before seeing. So knowledge is sought through hearing before seeing. Mm. And how do you seek through hearing? Through a teacher. You hear a teacher teach you. Seeing is the books. So these are the maratib of ilm. So a person who goes to seek knowledge from books before he goes to a teacher. Yeah, he, yeah, he will not understand. And even the Prophet Islam had a teacher. He had a sheikh. His sheikh was Jibreel. Jibreel he would come, he would teach the Prophet. Prophet would, you know, educate himself from him. And then Jibreel was taught from who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this ilm is talaqi, mushafah, it's taken. From teachers after teachers, so the first you, you know, people people say, "Oh, I'm just going to read. Give me a book." That's that's the one thing I always, you know, when you when you know, because I know it's going to be in the comments. Oh, I want to seek knowledge. Recommend me some books. No, recommend me a teacher. Say. Recommend me a teacher. Go find a sheikh. Oh, the sunnah. No. You know the sunnah. You know, and then and then you learn. And that eye is so profound because it's like as a human. And you know, also one thing that was said Abdurrahman used to always say to us. He say, "You know, when you look at Al Bukhari, and when you look at Ibn Taymiyyah." And when you look at the students that you've produced, Alhamdulillah, the ones who memorize Quran, because people are thinking, you know, I can't do this. Mm. You know, the playing field was level for all of us. Mm. It was a level. Sorry. We all came out of the mother's womb, not knowing anything. anything. Yeah. Ta'ala ta'ala but then the difference was some started, some decided to put more effort in. And the people are going to say, oh, but you know, some people have this inherent intelligence. And it's true, there is that the ka. You know, there's the the dhaka fitri, and then there's the dhaka iktisabi. Sorry. You know, Imam Al Shafi has that famous poetry: "Lan tanalu al ilma illa bi sitta tin sa umbi ka an tasiriha bi bi bayani." Dhakaun. The first thing he mentioned was you have to be smart. And you know, I, I know a lot of brothers who come from the streets or who didn't do very good in education. They say, "How am I going to seek knowledge? I'm just not smart. I'm never good at this." But they don't realize that education is of different types. It's of different types. Some of the ulama they had good hifth. But their mind wasn't that sharp And some had a sharp mind But their hift wasn't that sharp mm. But they both got it so What it was missing saying. That's why the scholars say There's the dhaka There's the intelligence Which is iktisabi The intelligence that you acquire You can aim You can earn Yeah and then there's the intelligence Which is fitri mm. the, You know there's that inherent So mm. you might have 20% natural intelligence The 80% can be acquired no. And we've seen examples of this Rabbi ibn Sulaiman al-Muradi Rahimullah ta'ala Is one of the Who's the imam Who Transmitted the bulk of the method of Imam al-Shafi'i in his Kitab al-Um. He mentioned, I used to sit with Imam al-Shafi'i after the class, an hour I used to keep him behind and say, I don't understand the mess. He'd repeat the same mess to me for an hour. Regu- and I wouldn't get it. He was the, 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 the challenged student. Uh, the dummy. <laughs> he came out to be the Imam who transmitted the method. Imam Jalal al-Din al-Siyuti, he was what? He was the one, he was the hafiz. Mm. He had hived better than he had understanding. And Jalad in Muhalli, he had his mind yeah. sharp in fiqh, and, you know, but his hived was weak. They didn't stop them. They went both went and they acquired that which they didn't have. Mm. You can train them. I, my hift is very bad. Well, my hift is very bad. I, I'm a person who I've, I've actually only taken memorizing. Like I, I, one of the things I regret, and well, I, if I could just say to the brothers and sisters, well, I, one of my biggest regrets is that when I started to study, I didn't start memorizing the Quran. And people, people used to say things to me like, don't worry, you know, this is more important. Memorize the Quran later. Well, it was a lie. And everyone who told me that today, well, I, I have resentment in my heart towards those people. Oh, and well, I have resentment. In my heart Because I took their advice And then there was There was brothers that Were advising me Always I remember one thing That Abu Taymi used to say to me I'd be memorizing a matin He said to me You remember He said Inna hada Qawl al-bashar He said This is a statement Allah. of a man And you left a statement of Allah So recently I've started to Just You know I've always been Memorizing the Quran It's not like I never did But it's just It wasn't a program Given it importance Now I'm, I've, I'm I've, I don't care about Anything else Except for that That's my that's my thing And I'm a person Who really struggles With memory like, Someone will tell you I'm really My memory is hard He knows I, 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 Even I tell you I say how long Did it take you To memorize this page He say half an hour You see it will take me Two days sometimes To memorize that page But I've been trying I've been, Every day I've been trying 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 Trying, trying And I have to remind myself you know, eventually it will come. Eventually it will come. Eventually it will come because it's the memory the scholars say is a muscle, muscle. Yeah. just like the arm. Yeah. I can't pick up twenty kg today. I'm gonna start with four. 
six, eight. But eventually I'm going to work my way up. So I've been trying, trying, trying. Today he just came to me as I memorized a page within less than half an hour. So he came to me today and Surah Nisa, which is hard. Mm. Surah Nisa is very hard. Yeah. It's very hard. One of the hardest. So I came to him today no, I, I, cause to read to him. He said, Would well, you memorize it already? I said, Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Because Alhamdulillah. The, the point improved. is, I'm not saying it's show off. I'm saying I'm the one who well, I'm the one who struggles with hivd. You know what I'm saying? You can probably pick out a bunch of videos where I've made mistakes in the verses. That's one of the things I just don't want to do that anymore. You know, I have to be honest with you and not pretend that like you're someone who you're not. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I'm a person who neglected the book of Allah and, and I and I it's one of the things I hate myself for. But I'm saying I'm a 30-year-old man and I have a kid now. And you know, you, you know one of the things that really drove me to this is I said, I want my daughter to memorize the 10 qiraat. But you know what I said to myself? If you're not. She's not gonna take it seriously if I didn't take it seriously. <laughs> Children, they learn with their they listen with their ears, not their what eyes. No. So I said, you know what? Nah. Right now she's a baby. She's like 10 months Allah and Barak. She doesn't know. So I've got like i got a few years, I need to get this sorted, I have to get the, to get the 10 qara'at. So since then, I've just been on it. I'm 30 year old man, I've got grey hairs on my beard, I've got a job, I work, you know. But I'm saying if I'm able to do it, so can you. And you're young and you've got youth on your side. Some of you are Arabs. <laughs> 100%, 100%. Sorry, yeah, I went off no, a little bit of a look. No, 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 100%, 100%. It's a, it's a very important point. Something just came back to our mind, which was, you was talking about how scholars um, started seeking knowledge at a later age. Mm -hmm. A few examples came to my head. Um, and if this isn't really enough for them to realize, I think yours was enough to be honest. Uh -huh. But if this isn't enough for you to say, look, I need to start learning. If you're 40 years of age, 30, 50, wherever it is, Allah Allah. Ibn Hazm, rahimahullah ta'ala, uh, it's mentioned the way he, the story, how he actually started you know, seeking knowledge. And now we know Ibn Hazm, of course, you know, the level he's reached of scholarship. Ibn Hazm, he started seeking knowledge. The story goes as well as he went to a janazah of a family member. And it was about Dhuhr time or something. So he came inside the masjid. He was waiting for the janazah. As when he came in, he sat down. So he's waiting for Dhuhr Salah, right? Dhuhr Salah will be prayed. And then the janazah Salah will be prayed. Then the sheikh, or one of the imam of the masjid, came to him. He said, what are you doing? You know, get up, pray to Raka'ah because the Prophet Sallam, he advised us Allah, do not sit down when you come into the masjid until you pray to Raka'ah. Tahiyya to the masjid. He said, This is strange, I've never heard this. So he prayed it. Then they prayed the janazah. Then they went to bury the deceased. Then they came back. Asr Salah already came in, so they missed the jama'ah in the masjid. So they came inside the masjid so they can pray. He's thinking, I was told the whole time, when you come in the masjid, pray to Raka'ah, right? So he said, Allahu Akbar, it was Asr now. Between Asr and Maghrib is Waqtu Nahi. Uh, so the same Shaykh, he said to him, what are you doing? It's the time that you shouldn't be praying because it's prohibited, it's haram. Yeah, of course, there's a difference between and pertaining to the I mean, no, Tahiyyat al-Masjid. If, 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 if it's uh, yeah, yeah, Salah, yeah, yeah. that, uh, that is Sabab. Nah, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, and he didn't take that opinion. Yeah, I personally take that opinion as well. But ala, ala kulli hal, then he said, he said, what's going on? This guy's first telling me that I'm committing a you know, sin for not praying. <laughs> and now he's telling me I'm committing a sin for praying. What is he talking about? <laughs> so then he went back home. He had a teacher who used to teach him like basic stuff, whatever. Or he used to teach his kids, I can't remember. He said to him, Dullani ala daril faqih Abi Abdullah ibn Dahum. He said, take me to the faqih of this place, who is Abi Abdullah ibn Dahum at that time. So he said he studied with him. He lazamahu. He stuck with him. He you know learned with him, etc. He says I came out after three, four years, and he said I began to debate against Abu Walid Al Baji, ah. who was an expert in Maliki fiqh. Ah, he started seeking knowledge when though the scholars is him forty years of age, 35, 36 or something like that. Another example, if you look at um, Al Iz Ibn Abdul Salam. He was given the laqab, the title, Sultanul Ulama. Mm. He, the scholars, they mentioned, uh, Tajuddin al Subki, he mentioned in the Tabaqat al Shafi'iya mm. that he started seeking knowledge when he was around 40 years of age. Uh, SubhanAllah. And he was actually Ummi, he couldn't read or write. Wow. The Somalis would say he didn't know Alif Ba. He Sorry. didn't even know how to say Alif Ba, etc. Because he couldn't read or write. Ala kulli hal. And he got to a station where he would. The leaders would be yeah. We're coming on to that Exactly yeah. So the thing is though he, The way he started His knowledge was He um, 
So it wasn't him that was uh, Ummi, my bad. It was Al-Qaffal, who's the third example that mm. just came to our mind. I'll mention him as well, inshallah, within a minute or so. But anyway, how did, how did uh, Al-Izz ibn Abd salam start seeking knowledge? He started seeking knowledge because he was a very poor man. Tajradil al-Subki mentions that he used to sleep outside the masjid. And one time he was sleeping there, it was really, really cold, freezing. It was the this winter. Is Al-Izz. Al-Izz ibn Abd salam naam. So he was sleeping and he was, he was outside the masjid. I want to say a house, is just a wall. That didn't have a roof on top And it's cold It's the winter He slept And he fell into a major hadith He had a wet dream And also I forgot He was sick He had some condition He had a flu He was sick So it's winter And he's sick And he just had a wet dream And the message's closed It's night time He can't get inside So he came out He saw a bucket It's not hot water It's cold So he thought I need to get rid of this You know Major impurity So he had a shower with it And he prayed Salat al-Fajr and his condition got worse because it's cold water. And he's already cold. And he's already sick. And, and sick. it's winter. He's allowed to not use that. He can just do Yeah. But listen to it. What happened after that? He slept the next day, the next night, sorry. Same thing happened. He had a hadith again. So this time he went, but this time he actually fainted because it was so cold. And then he's there. He's got the bucket of water again, washing himself. Then he heard a guy saying, power phrasing, do you want to worship Allah upon true knowledge or are you going to continue worshiping them upon this ignorance? SubhanAllah. So Al-Izz ibn Abd salam he went and he studied, he sought knowledge and they mentioned that he memorized Tanbihu Shirazi, which is a fiqh book. SubhanAllah. He memorized it, read it upon the mashayikh, etc. And then he came out and now his name is Al-Izz ibn Abd salam Sultan Al-Ulama. Sultan al and yani he's the hujja, he's the head when it comes to or one of the reference points for uh, Shafi'i fiqh. If we look at one last example, what's his name? Um, al Qafal al Marwazi. Yeah. He used to, he started seeking knowledge 40 years of age. He used to fix keys, he was a locksmith. He used to fix keys, etc. So they mention that he realized, you know what, I've actually got a good brain, I'm smart. Why don't I start seeking knowledge at 40 years of age, right? Some of them they also mentioned it's that. It's interesting because now when the guy's not smart, they say send him seek knowledge. Those days, yes. it was a, it, like the intelligent ones don't no. go seek knowledge. Yes, yes, yes. Some of the, story, the narrators they mentioned it wasn't that he was, it was his, his business came bad, so he actually started seeking knowledge. So Allah Kulli had a shahid min al kalam. The point is, he started to seek knowledge. So he went, he studied, etc. And uh, he studied Shafi'i fiqh And the fuqaha When it comes to fiqh al-shafi'i Generally fiqh al-shafi'i is divided into Khurasaniyin mm. and Iraqiyin Iraqi. He Al-Qafal al-Marwazi Juhayni Naam, sahih He's his student His student is Juhayni uh, Juhayni studied under Al-Qafal al-Marwazi uh, So him and Al-Ghazali were Al-Qur'an Naam, sahih uh. But the one I'm getting to is 40 years of age, he started seeking knowledge, and now he's a uh, subki or uh, sorry, a uh, sanani. He mentions and says, "Kana wahid zamani fi zuhdi wal hifdi wal fiqh wal itqan, a imat dunya leader." And people now reference him when it comes to fiqh al-shafi. The point I'm trying to get to is these were people that are old, and he was the ummi by the way who couldn't read. People old, they have you know careers. A qafar, he's fixing the keys, etc. He could not read or write. What is your excuse? You know, you know, Sheikh Wallah, you know, when, when an example that just came to my mind, the Prophet Isa Sam. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, naam, sahih. His type was 40 sahih. years old. Sahih, sahih, sahih. And he was a literate. And he was <laughs> an ummi. He was, oh, say, he was from an ummi nation. And he said, Ma ana biqari, I can't read. Read. Iqra. Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah. It, yeah, right. it, our, our Nabi, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Wallah is an example for us. We don't need any other that. examples. <laughs> You're right No but there's one thing That people might say The Prophet Sallam He was naturally given it He didn't have to work That hard for it etc But he did it. Because he got squeezed And yeah. he was getting excited No you're no, right no, You're right I, look, look what the Prophet said He said uh, Hadith Sahih Bukhari uh, When he came to Khadija Radiallahu anha He said Zambiluni Zambiluni mm, Cover me up Cover me up He said what He said I became scared for myself Ibn Hajar in Fathul Bari said Hey What? Al-Maut He was scared he was going to die Even the Prophet feared death for himself On the path of seeking knowledge Jibreel was squeezing him And so Allah said We're sending upon you a heavy word the Prophet ﷺ would sweat. He was on a camel. His camel would come sorry, down sorry, sorry. because of the weight of the revelation. In the revelation, Allah said, "Lo anzalna hadal Qur'an ala jabal." 
لا رأيته خاشع متصدع من خشية الله. Have we seen this Quran done upon a mountain? You have seen it crumble to dust out of the fear of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So it's heavy and it's coming down on Him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, step by step, right? Mm-hmm. And the point is that Imam Ibn Qayyim he mentioned something powerful in his Miftah Dar Saada. He said that this ayah shows that if the Quran is heavy and it was heavy on the Prophet sallam and it caused him difficulty, then everyone must feel a portion of that weight if they want this knowledge. But ultimately, hadith is explaining the Quran mm. and lugha is to understand the Quran and the Sunnah. Usul fiqh is all coming back to us. So, all knowledge is ultimately coming back to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, so, if you want it, it's heavy. So, you're going to feel some of that pain. You're going to feel it. That's why Yahya ibn Abi Kathir said, La ilma bi rahatil jism. That knowledge is not sought with a relaxed body. You tie yourself out, you wear yourself out, you know. But you know what it is? You know, when you love it, you enjoy it. This is the, and when you value it. You value it. When you know what it is. Well, now we listen to these motivational speakers who are making money and they want to buy these big football teams and you know and they talk about you know uh, I work all night and I don't sleep and you know they it's hard work but it's leather it's sweet it's joy why you enjoy it you know what I'm saying anyone who works hard is hard anyone who achieved anything whether he's a football player or a businessman or whatever he worked hard but you enjoy it you know what I'm saying but what we're trying to show here is you can do both. No, no, definitely, hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. He just needs balance, put mm. time and effort. Even you know, حتى عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه, he would study with the Prophet Asim on one day, and the other day he would work. Yeah, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. One day he would seek knowledge, one day he would work, and his companion, his business partner, would go and seek the other day, and then he would say, "Tell me what the Prophet is talking today." From the beginning to now, we give, well, like we give examples from back then. It was still continuing. up until today. One thing I wanted to mention is that. By the way, I have I I believe my belief is that university is not actually that vital. Some people yeah, might likewise. think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people might think that you know I'm I might be pro uni or pro secular studies, etc. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Um, and I actually think if the person wants to go to university, that's one thing. Also, if the person has to go to uni for that specific career, that's a second thing. Like Nothing. medicine, for example. Yeah, medicine. If But like means... business, you know, you can you can go to vocational yeah. courses. You can have apprenticeships. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And I also think as well, those who have not gone to university or haven't excelled in secular studies, and would rather go through a different route for me as apprenticeships or whatever, that's a way of success. It doesn't like I, I'm the point I'm getting to is confining dunya success is not correct to confine it to university only. Someone who doesn't go uni can be very successful. Someone who does go uni can also be successful. If, in fact, Either many, way, though, many, many a time, if you look at a lot of the people who are who are some of the most successful men on earth, mm-hmm. they didn't even go to uni. They hired people who went to uni. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. There's positives of going and not going, yeah. etc. But of course, I don't know if you want to really get into that. You know, the benefits um, of going. I've mentioned the benefits it. Of not. You know what it is. I, You know, you know, you know. There, there is there, I, my my stance on uni has changed quite a bit over the years. First, I was really anti uni, unless, as you said, it's a specific degree, and even then, it's like, are you sure you want to risk it all the fit and this that, and the other? But then there's an issue, which is that to do hijra, a lot of times going to be hard with that degree. A lot mm. of the countries, the Muslim countries that you want to go to, they um. I mean, look, if you want to go back home, it. you don't really need a degree. Whenever you want to go back home, you don't need a degree. You want to go back to Somalia, it's not an issue. You want to go back to Pakistan, it's not an issue. But sometimes, you know, maybe going back home is a bit hard. You want to go somewhere in the middle. You take your family to Kuwait, mm. uh, Malaysia, yeah, you Dubai, really. you know, okay. because maybe take maybe your parents not on going back straight away. Maybe, you know, if it's too much of a drastic change. Mm. So you want to, you know, go there somewhere. You're going to need a degree. You know what I'm saying? Degree makes it just that much bit easier. But it's not necessary because, like I said, I can go back to Pakistan, I don't need a degree. They'll take whatever British passport, <laughs> no problem. <Sorry, laughs> They'll give sorry, you the big sorry. job. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But having a degree does help in the sense where in that in that department it helps get to a Muslim country a bit easier. Mm-hmm. You know, in terms of jobs and whatnot, and you know you you do quite well there. So that's one perspective. But you know what is? It's just one thing I would always tell them people to do is just look, be ve- like you know Allah subhanahu wa taala insan ala nafsi basira. You know yourself best. Just be real with yourself. If you're gonna go to uni and slip up, because if you're gonna lose your dean at uni, then no degree is worth it. Even if you say, "Oh, I want to study medicine, I can't do this anyway without a degree," but then you're gonna lose your dean. If you know you're a person, you're not strong in your dean. 
don't gamble with your deen. And how many times have we seen brothers? I so many brothers. I I I because I know them. I said, bro, I'm advising you. Well, I don't go to uni, akhi. You go there, akhi, it's gonna be a problem. They didn't listen. Don't worry, I'm gonna be good. Where are they now? No, I think there's various things because there are a lot of people that have gone to university as well who haven't kind of lost their dean either. I mean, I found so dean I think, at uni. I started practicing at uni. I was giving that. So, but the point I'm saying that's what I said. Belly in sand. I don't see the mm-hmm. The person knows himself, but just be honest with yourself. Yeah. Don't lie. No, hundred percent. Now I think if someone can pay for it, someone can find friends as well. Someone yeah. can, uh, you know, find classes, have a teacher, have a mentor, something mm-hmm. like that. I think it's a good thing definitely to do so. Another thing I wanted to mention is um, going to university has a long term good for the person in the angle that he could be seen as a role model for his kids as well. What do I mean by that? Firstly, I'm against the whole situation pertaining to pushing secular studies and we need to be, you know, uh, become successful Muslims and we need to get into politics and this and that, blah, yeah. blah, blah. I think that's batil, batil yeah. on, uh, <laughs> you know, because Allah, Allah told us if you want this success and all that stuff, just come with the following things. Allah mentioned to us, وَعَدَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَا يَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَمْ يَسْتَخْلِفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ ولا يمكن لهم دينهم الذي ارتضى ولا يبدل لهم من بعدهم خوفهم امنا these three things Allah said he would do two conditions he mentioned before the two conditions are so just Allah has promised just told them those things yeah I'm coming yeah. Allah has promised oh yeah, gonna, Allah has promised those that have iman amongst you that iman is the correct tawhid the correct aqidah the correct beliefs and they do righteous actions i'm going to give them these three things Number one, I'm going to give them istikhlaf fil ard. I'll make them leaders. Number two, I am going to uh, give them yumakkin allahum deelahum allah the deen that they love, their deen that they're proud of. I'm going to make it easy for them. We hear about this new LGBT stuff. Uh, oh, we have to, you know, uh, support them so we can get an overall good and this stuff. Allah told us if you want your deen, if you want to practice your deen good, if you don't want trouble or anything, just come with these things. And last but not least, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said, He will give them security after their fear. What was the reason for all of those things? The two conditions were mentioned first. Lakin the reason why also comes after. Ya'budunani la yushrikuna bi shia. Do you wish to worship me and not give worship to others other than Allah? Tawheed, Tawheed, Tawheed. So the point I'm trying to get to here is anyway. I am against the notion of let's be a people that go university, let's become educated people, let's become a people that you know are doctors and we have no, politicians don't be educated, and all that but stuff. As in just as that being the primary campaign is what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I mean. Oh, yeah, that's the better way of yeah. saying it. Don't make secular studies and gaining positions your primary uh, force to gain good in this world. Because Allah didn't say that's the condition. Allah gave us different ones. So I forgot what I was going to say now, which was, um, I don't believe in that. But what, yeah, that's it. I, I remember now. I don't believe in that notion. But I think what's important is that, for example, right now we have loads of you know gang crime. We have youngsters that are off their deen and all that other stuff. Their solution is Tawheed, of course. But the other day I thought of something. And if you look at statistics, the overwhelming majority of the youngsters that are Misguided in terms of Not their deen wise But they're misguided in terms of Dunya wise that, Does that make sense? Misguided through du- Like dunya wise Like they're just all over the place yeah, Selling yeah. drugs They don't have direction yeah. Whatever Even according to f- The dunya standards They're misguided Yeah yeah exactly <laughs> I realise When you look at the statistics Compare them If you look at the statistics And compare the factor of their parents' social and you know also economic e- situation, economic situation via their education, they're completely different. Most doctors, if it means politicians, the school, high school teachers, professors, their children are not the gangsters. It's the ones that might have not gone through that route. So mm. in a way, in a way, not that it's primary, no, because the solution is the tawhid anyway. But if we look at a secondary factor, someone whose parents are successful in the dunya, or they might be educated, for example, they're less likely to fall into getting misguided in the dunya. I hope mm. that made sense. Yeah. And that wasn't no, it confusing. Makes it makes sense. Uh, you, know, you, know what is, I, I, you know what it is? Sometimes, you know, you know, have you ever seen, you know, bike chains? Mm. You know, sometimes... 
the bike chain is like all over the place. I'm getting into bike riding recently. You get into bike riding, yeah. yeah. I'll embed it. So, that, yeah. so, so you know when the, you know when the chain looks all messed up here, yeah? mm. but the moment you fix it in one place, everything else falls into place. No, you know what I'm talking about. It's very well. Yeah, so it's it's all over the place, but you just have to fix one thing. Yeah. And everything falls into place. Which I'm not so, good at. <laughs> so, so right now you want many things. You want to fix many things. Well, like what's what's that one thing that's gonna cause everything to fall into place? What lights to eat? You want rizq? It's with Allah. Everything you want, which is provision, is it is it rizq? You want women? Rizq. Husband? Women. So how's that husband? Rizq. Children? Rizq. House? Rizq. You want whatever you whatever you want. Knowledge? Rizq. It's all rizq. Ar-Raziq. He has it with him. He has it in his hands, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he, who does he give it to? Firstly, he's promised. Allah promised وَفِي السَّمَاءِ يُرِزْقُكُمْ وَمَا تُوَعَدُونَ فَوَرَبِّ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ Look at this Allah said that your rizq Allah, Allah has it in the sky And Allah took an oath He took a qasm He said فَوَرَبِّ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ Allah took an oath by the Lord of the heavens and the earth that, he, that, that it is true The way that me and you are speaking That he will give That he will provide our rizq Imam Hassan al-Basri said May Allah's curse be upon the people Who Allah had to take a qasim He had to swear And say I swear I'm going to provide for you And they still didn't believe him SubhanAllah Because they went for haram means They went for dunya They chased the dunya not uh, the, the university instead of madrasa You know what I'm saying So But if you flip it Allah said May yattaqillah Yaja'allahu makhraja Wa yarzquhu min haythu la yahtasib Whoever fears Allah, I, he comes with taqwa. Taqwa is to come with the awamir mm. and to stay away from the nawahi. To come with the commands, Allah commanded you, do it, and to stay away from the prohibitions. That's taqwa. So you come with that, Allah says, He will find a way out for you. You're trapped thinking, where's the next bill going to come from? What am I going to do with my kids? What do I do? I don't want my kids to end up on the streets. Da, 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 da. Suddenly, a fire exit opens. The building's burning. But what happens? You see a fire exit. You see an extinguisher. He'll give you risk. He'll provide from you. What is it? A wife? What is it? Children? What is it? Money? What is it? Knowledge? From places, ways, and avenues you could have never, ever, ever imagined. Amr ibn Sharhbil, Shabi, he said in this ayah, when I look back at my life and the places where I got provision, I got it more from places. That I didn't imagine Didn't expect Didn't expect that I did We're like that Wallahi I swear by Allah Azzawajal Not just me I challenge everyone The same thing Same Ask yourself I done a podcast The other day with Suleiman He said the same thing The job I look back The places where my rizq came Was more from places That I didn't expect Than I expected to show you That even with all my planning My planning And that which was I expecting To come at the end of my plan It didn't go according to plan Allah brought me a risk from something that was outside of my plan. Now, we're not saying don't plan. We're not saying don't take the means. But the asal here Allah. is Allah. So if you, like, look, well, I even, look at this. Allah told you your purpose in life, that you worship him alone. Allah said, I created you so that you can worship me. He didn't say he created you so you can uh, uh, go out there and seek a rizq. He didn't create you for your objective so you can get married, have children, go to university, have degrees. Yeah, look at that. As soon as he told you your purpose, he told you, what? In Allah, huwa razaqu. Like, look, Allah is telling you, this is your job. Your job is to worship me, but why I'm going to provide? Allah said, Allah is the one who provides. He is Ar Razak. Ibrahim said to his people, seek rizq from Allah. Because people go into shirk seeking rizq from other than Allah. Worship him. It's the same way how you mentioned the connection between jahl and sins is a theme in the Quran. There's a connection between rizq. And to eat no, Worship Allah alone Allah will provide That doesn't mean be lazy Because Because Yeah because Because you, you know You know, you know the, the, the The most beautiful definition Of tawakkul That I ever came across mm. oh, I so profound well, I, And it shows And demonstrates The true essence of to eat Tawakkul is to Completely rely upon Allah To make it happen Whilst you completely 100% exert your own efforts Mm. But where's the beauty in that? Is that despite you put in a 100% effort You still know mm. that it was all Allah That's Tawheed 
as in because a person may fall into that what Qarun fell into. You know, he thought his wealth and was all based on his own knowledge. A person may put all the effort in and say, me. So, but the point is for a person to put 100% effort, but still in his heart to know it was all Allah who made it happen, is a true manifestation of Tawheed. And that's what tawakkul is. That's why scholars, because we say, what's the point? What's the point of relying upon Allah if at the end of the day, so sorry, what's the point of taking the means if I'm going to rely upon Allah anyway? No. That's, that's that's not real reliance Real reliance is for you to Present all of your efforts Which is a fit in Allah Because you might think you, you made this happen But then at that time to know Nothing to do with you It wasn't even me <laughs> No you're right You're right You're right 100%, So, if, so 100%. my point is If you fix that Your health falls into place Your kids fall into place Your wealth Your job Everything falls into place I never come across a person Who's really On seeking knowledge People are different In terms of their income And their economic situation I never found a person who's lazy. Look at Abu Tim. If you speak to him, he's thinking of ways to, you know, get earn his risk, seek his risk. Yes, in the same way, the mashaykh, the imma, the, the students, the, we see that we see them. Allah, but really take this seriously. They're not just sitting there like bummy, but the knowledge is their primary concern. And Allah always takes care of His people. Hundred percent. Oh, they suffer, they struggle. But that's life. I'm happy to come into the door of Jannah. Do you think you're going to go to paradise? Allah is not going to see the one who strives amongst you. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. You're going to be tested. Paradise isn't come easy. 100%. Without doubt, so something that comes to mind was uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib. Yeah. 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 Everyone wants to seek knowledge. I'm a talib al ilm. I'm going to this class. Are you going to this class? I'm going to that class, etc. I think the hype is good, but it's also not good in a way. It's initially good, but if it isn't remedied, if that's a word, it becomes a problem. Because someone's going to have the ragba, the tumuh, you know, the ragba shadida, this great, great, great desire to seek knowledge. Then he starts going to 10 different lessons a week, 15 different <sighs> lessons a week. He doesn't know the book he's studying. He doesn't know who wrote the book. He doesn't know where in the ladder of knowledge it is. Because knowledge is bit tadarruj. You have ulum al-ala, you have ulum al-maqasid. Each one has levels. There's Every levels. science, there's levels. You start off with the nahu, you do al-jurumiyya, mutammimma, qatrun nada, mulahatu al-i'rab. Okay, al-fiyatu al-malik, same as, you know, hadith. You'd start off with the basic, you'd go up. Arba'ul al-nawi, umda, bulub, haq. Sahih. Even look, look, and then the point I'm trying to get to is there's Tadarji's ways of doing it. I wanted to give a message to the young people. So actually, no, that's that's the first point. The hype of seeking knowledge, and then I want to compare it to the their level of usual life matters. What does that mean? I believe youngsters they have this zeal to seek knowledge. But then they firstly don't know the reality And also they don't know That they need to be doing the normal basic things in life as well mm. They don't have a job They, If they don't have a job They don't for example study They don't have to do an apprenticeship Like they don't do something So what happens is usually Their mom gets on their case Their dad gets on their case What are you doing with your life? You're just going to classes 24-7 X, Y and Z The sad thing is And it really makes me sad That hype it will continue for X amount of time, months, maybe a year, two years, etc. Then the anything. problem comes. Firstly, they didn't even do it the correct way, so they won't achieve anything. Secondly, they now want to get married. But they they want to do etc. They want to do this, and they can't. So I just wanted to say to the brothers that think firstly seeking knowledge is just to go to you know, 10 different classes for three, four months. It's not. Those brothers that think that they can completely neglect their life Your mother has a responsibility waiting for you You need to help her, your dad, your brothers, etc If you think you can neglect all of that Under the name of seeking knowledge You're in trouble yeah, well, This is not the way it should be You should be learning, studying a religion And also coming up with these responsibilities yeah. You're going to have a family soon How are you going to provide for them? You're going to even like Once again, I'm saying It doesn't mean you need to go uni No Open up a business if it means that. You have to do, do something. something. something yeah. Don't lay around. And I'm really for opening up businesses. You know, I think that's... Oh, no, no, 100%, 100%. Yeah. But just don't neglect the responsibility yeah. Allah has put upon you. Don't just book a ticket and just go, no, plan yeah. your life. Do this. You know, one thing that was really amazing that came to me was... Um, 
uh, what's his name Sheikh Saleh Sheikh Uthaymin you know he went to Jama to Malik Saud mm. do you know at what age no he enrolled at 26 years of age oh wow 26 it was a Saudi before he was in Saudi I'm sorry he was with the Sheikh Abdurrahman Saudi in Qasim of course he done you know the Arabic sciences he done Tafsir Hadith whatever but the point I'm trying to get to is it's never too late, even if it means you wait for two, three years, help your mama, stay with your mom, and at the same time, learn the basics. Why is it that you can't memorize the Quran in those two, three years, then start applying for university, or start applying mm-hmm. it, but then go slightly later? Why do you not do that? Why is it that you're by default thinking you need to go straight away? The point I'm trying to get to, the message I'm trying to shoot home, don't neglect your life matters. Allah will even question you because there are responsibilities you've been put on. Allah Shatta will say to you, What your mom was here? Why didn't you help her out? Oh, I was going to classes. Classes is fardu kifaya. As long as it's not, you know, the wajib knowledge, even you can learn it in other means anyway. Your father needs help, your parents need help, etc. So think, don't dive into this hype, this zeal, this buzz that's yeah. going on right now. Not just right now, I think it's calmed down a bit, but be a bit smart. But in learn, also, also study. Not, also not to go into the other extreme, which is to Coming neglect to the part. rights of Allah for the Coming rights of family. That. Because that's Coming very to easy that. to do as well. As Ahlul Sunnah to Al-Jama'a, may Allah make us from them, you have to be balanced. We worship Allah upon hope and fear. Mm. Likewise, your life should be balanced generally. I'm saying don't go on the extreme of this, but don't also now say I am only go like don't make an excuse that you can't go to classes and seek knowledge because I'm helping my mother. Or because I'm doing X, Y, and Z. No. Help your mother out, but don't go completely off it. Mm. You have to do both. You have yeah, to you do have both. To do. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah said seeking that. knowledge is obligatory on every single Muslim, even if there's some kalam on the uh, on, 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 on the offense of this particular nation, but like the meaning is sahih. The meaning is sahih because the other. Allah said, Fa'alam anahu la ilaha illa. Have knowledge of la ilaha illa. La ilaha illa precedes knowledge. La ilaha illa. You can't go to paradise without it. You know, there's a verse that people don't mention. Tadda. And I always say to myself, why do people never do istishad of this verse? Tadda. Ever. I've Tadda. never heard anyone say it so far. You know in the Arabic language you have the lam of ta'lil, صح? Yeah. The lam of reason. defect. The actual number ta'lil, yeah. illa, no. means defect. But in translation, we say lam of reason. Yeah. So you'd say, for example, the habtu ila al-masjid li usalli. No. Sharibtu al-ma'a li li uzila atash. No. Li. I went to the masjid so I can. So pray. I can. So I, I can. drank the water so I can remove the my thirst. thirst. You know. So the so that I can uh-huh. the reason why you done it occurs after this lam. Whatever is before the lamb was the verb, the actual thing that happened. Allah should said something very profound in the Quran. He said, "Allahu alladhi khalaqa sab'a samawatin wa min al-ard mithlahunna yatanazzal al-amru bainahun li ta'lamu an Allah ala kulli shayin qadir wa an Allah qad ahata bi kulli shayin alma." Yes, Allah Subhanahu wa said in translation of English, Allah created the seven heavens the and the earth and the mata alternates or the matter descends between them yeah. basically one the reason. whole world the whole one reason the sun the moon the, the earth cosmos. the grass the whole cosmos everything that exists for one purpose so that you can know that Allah is able to do everything and Allah's knowledge encompasses everything this is Tawheed Asma'u Sifat and it's Tawheed al and you've only been yeah. created here so that you can know who Allah is SubhanAllah you go to university, you eating food so you can know, you know things like eating food, sleeping, uh, you know, family ties. All of these things are external factors that just allow you to do the original factor. So you eating food is so you can be energized, so you can know who Allah is. You going to sleep so you can get energy. You going to university is. Oh, I was doing this podcast. They are external means, but they are not the actual reason why you're here. So, what's the point I'm trying to get to here is don't get lost, don't get confused. About this matter of I need to do this I need to do that I need to go uni I need to do You know help my parents Or anything like that You are alive You're sitting here You're breathing That's the only reason you're here for So anyway May Allah make us from the people That They hear the speech And they follow it And not a people After hearing all of these examples People that sought knowledge And all of these things They just sit at home now And say I still can't do it Last message I want to come to is We spoke a lot about seeking knowledge 
We spoke a lot about virtues of knowledge. We spoke a lot about examples of people that sought knowledge at a late age. We spoke about balancing between knowledge and secular knowledge. We spoke about all of that. I just wanted to touch upon the knowledge so far seems to be a process of storing information in our brains. That's what it's come across so far. Like in the knowledge that we want to learn is definitely not a storage of it's not a storage mechanism of information. I was Haqil al Biri rahimahullah ta'ala. He mentions some points that beautifully summarize the knowledge you're learning, the aim of it. I and mean, why are you learning Islam? Why are you learning this knowledge? Why are you going to classes? It's not so you can store knowledge. He said, He said, Abu Bakr, إلى علم تكون به إماما مطاعا إن نهيت وإن أمرت ويجل ما بعينك من غشاها ويهديك السبيل إذا ضللتها ويجل ما ب... وتحمل منه في ناديك تاجا ويكسوك الجمال إذا عريتها ينالك نفعه ما دمت حيا ويبقى لك الذخره إن ذهبت هو العظب المهند ليس ينبو تصيب به مقاتل من أردت these five characteristics that he mentioned, I wanted to touch upon. Because if the knowledge you're learning is not doing this, he mentions later on, فَلَيْتَكَ ثُمَّ لَيْتَكَ مَا فَهِمْتَ Number one, it's knowledge إِلَىٰ عِلْمٍ تَكُونُ بِهِ إِمَامًا Knowledge that you are going to be a leader with. مُطَاعًا Obeyed. إِنَّ هَيْتَ وَإِنَ مَرْتَ If you say this is allowed, prohibited, if you say this is an order, do it, you'll be listened to. What does this mean? First on a larger scale, but the main point here He's trying to shoot him Even family. for your family members You Akhi are going to get married You don't want your wife To ask you something About menses for example You need to go to someone else You are going to have kids This is haram How are you going to tell them This is halal and haram How are you going to lead A whole family How are you going to be A shepherd of your family If you do not have this knowledge So the first one is You're going to be a leader you, no, For you to, to lead your family A fact that Just took from Sheikh Abdul Rahman Nasa said this tafsir You know the, uh, On that الرجال قوامون على النساء. He mentioned that the قوامه the the men have been stood to maintain the affairs of the women. The men are there to maintain the affairs of the women. People take this moment mainly to mean in terms of finances. He said, but the, what, if 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 the ayah is talking about <coughs> maintaining the dunya affairs of the women, من باب الأولى that's more befitting than is to maintain her religious affairs Allah. to establish the hudud of Allah in the house. The boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the house to teach your family members to do this, to do that. So subhanAllah al azim you know, uh you you know you can't be married and not have knowledge. Allah said, Yeah, you live in a manuku and for sakum ahli kum nara, oh you believe save yourselves and your families from the hellfire. What did al dahak say about the ayah? What did Ibn Abbas say about the ayah? What did Mujahid what did Suddi say about the ayah? They said, You ali muhum. So the way that you save them from the fire is you teach them. Then then what you do? You you command them mm. first. You teach them, then you command them. Sorry, sorry. Just, 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 no, no, it's good, it's good. So that was the first one. You need to lead your family. The second one he says is Someone, أخي, who doesn't have knowledge of Allah, he's blind. He can't see anything. It's a blindfold. You're walking around. You're blindfolded. You cannot see. هل يستوي الأعمى والبصير is the one who's blind and who can see the same. No, mm. you're blind. Mm. Why are you blind? Because you don't know your religion. So what is this knowledge going to do? It's going to uplift this veil that's on your eyes. It's mm. going to uncover the veil from your eyes. If knowledge is not doing this, if knowledge is not doing this, and there's a message to every brother right now and sister that's listening, if you are going to classes, and day by day, you're not saying, whoa, I never knew it like that, subhanAllah. And you increase this, like, this veil that's been uncovered. The other day, a student, I was explaining something to him, or them too, sorry. Allah said, 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 Because it came, Mafa'il, Qawarir. So why is it? Sigati Muntah al Jumu'ah. Why is it Qawarir? Uh. Sorry, why is it Qawarir and not Qawarir? Uh. So I explained to him, I said to him, Look, Mamunu Amin al Sarf, these are one of the places that if they come, because Surah Al Insan, it ends in ah, 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 fathatain most yeah, of the time. Yeah, talks. Then we say, Mujawa. Mujawa, I'm sorry, exactly. We say, on simpler terms, of course, I was explaining to him. So I said, Qawadira, to make the pattern continue, the yeah. rhythm. But look at the Mus'haf, it's not going to have a fathatain ah. because it's going to go against. 
the <laughs> grammatical rule. <laughs> it has fatha, but then it has an alif after it. Yeah. It has a sukun. Uh, the point I'm trying to get to is he was like, "Whoa, wow. that made sense." <laughs> and he's uplifting from him a veil that was yeah. on his eyes. So if you're going to class, he's not doing that. You need to rethink. <laughs> so anyway, on every case, it will guide you ever if you become if you ever become misguided. This is you know those young people, which is uh, I normally used to think bad about to be honest, but it's actually a good thing now. You know those people that seek knowledge when they're really young, but they're forced by their parents. They memorize the Quran, etc. There's actually a benefit to that. I used to be against it, but someone who's young and was forced to memorize the Quran, and then he goes astray. He'll come he back. will come back somehow 100%. There's always hope Because he's going to hear a verse maybe That he came it's across He'll remember a class He'll come The fitrah yeah. is there yeah. So you become misguided This knowledge is going to be there bring To bring back. you back When you become naked He's going to clothe you What did he say? He said What did he say? If this one is not happening in your lives and seek knowledge, you need to think again. He said knowledge should be like a sword. You know that muhannad is the sword from India because they're really strong. sharp That's on the and strong. Right. Yeah. Naam no, sahih. I think he praised the person. Praised. Yeah, he praised. He praised. He praised. But I think he had a muhannad as well. Allahu alam. I don't know if he had it, but he praised it anyway. But he said tosibu. Anyone you strike with the sword, you will destroy them. I'm not saying kill people with it. But what is he talking about? These shayateen that are coming to you whilst you're in your room. And it's dark Telling you watch pornography And speak to the sister etc These well, shatim well, call you, you The atheists We're Coming on to that one exactly the innovators that come to you protected me. yourself An atheist comes to you Speak to you You're ready to destroy him You go to university Your lecturer is telling you About atheism And evolution etc You destroy him You know people are coming to you To spread their false aqidah inside you You destroy them Shubuhat Manhaj issues etc You're ready If it's not doing this You need to say to yourself Wait where is the benefit in it? يَنَالُكَ نَفْعُهُ مَا دُمْتَ حَيَّا وَيَبْقَى لَكَ ذِكْرُهُ إِنْ ذَهَبْتَ Whilst you're alive, it will benefit you. How? You're going to worship Allah upon Basira. You're going to understand who Allah is. You're going to have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you pass away, it's going to benefit you. So these are beautiful things. I believe people look at those things and they say to themselves, Am I achieving them or not? They should really think. At the end, he mentioned some beautiful lines which we're going to conclude on inshallah, where it really destroys the notion of I'm seeking knowledge so that I can be knowledgeable. I'm seeking knowledge so that people can think I'm knowledgeable. I'm seeking so knowledge for a position. So I'm seeking knowledge for debating. I'm seeking knowledge X, Y, Z. No. He said, وَإِنْ أُعْطِيتَ فِيهِ طَوِيلَ بَاعٍ وَقَالَ النَّاسُ إِنَّكَ قَدْ عَلِمْتَ فلا تأمن سؤال الله عنه بتوبيخ علمت فهل عملت فرأس العلم تقوى الله حقا وليس بأن يقال لقد رأست وأفضل ثوبك الإحسان لكن ترى ثوب الإساءة قد لبست إذا ما لم يفدك العلم خيرا فخير منه ألا قد جهلت وإن ألقاك فهمك في مهاو فليتك ثم ليتك ما فهمت He said this knowledge you are seeking the aim of it is the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He mentions and says, if you're given this knowledge and you're from the successful ones that are given a large amount of knowledge and people start saying to you, Qad alimta, you mashallah, you're knowledgeable, Allah barik, la ta'man su'al Allah anhu. Don't be safe from the rebuking of Allah where he questions you on the day of judgment. Alimta fahal amilta. You knew, so why didn't you act upon it? This is what the knowledge is meant to, meant, meant to be. So you can worship Allah upon Basira. Then he said, فَرَأْسُ الْعِلْمِ تَقْوَ اللَّهِ حَقَّى Indeed, the true knowledge, the aim of it is taqwa Allah. To fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَيْسَ بِأَنْ يُقَالَ لَقَدْ رَأَسْتَ It's not so you can be told, MashaAllah, you're a high level person. No, no, no. So people come and kiss you. No. So you can get a position. No. Then he beautifully says, if he says, the best clothing you could have put on with this knowledge is ihsan. You say, Allah, worship Allah upon ihsan. This is how you could have beautified. This knowledge will beautify you because you're going to worship Allah upon ihsan. لكن ترى ثوب الإساءة قد لبستا. You've been seen that you've worn the clothing, not of ihsan, the clothing of evil. Your aqeed has gone messed. You're calling people to LGBT. You're doing this. You've been seen on the street selling drugs. You have the Quran in your heart. You've been seen that you're wearing these bad clothes. 
if your knowledge has not benefited you, فَخَيْرٌ مِنْهُ أَلَّوْ قَدْ جَهِلْتَ It would have been better that you stay ignorant. Why is it better you stayed ignorant? Because Allah is not going to hold you accountable for knowledge that you had you didn't act upon. وَإِنْ أَلْقَاكَ فَهْمُكَ فِي مَهَاوٍ If your knowledge throws you in destruction, throws you in trouble, فَلَيْتَكَ ثُمَّ لَيْتَكَ مَا فَهِمْتَ then I, you wish, yani it would have been better that you did not understand in the first place. So Allah Kulli Hal anyway, we spoke about seeking knowledge. Last message is that this knowledge you are learning is so you can get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not so that you can get positions. It's none of those reasons. So you can stand before Allah and say, Allah, I put the verse, Allah alladhi khalaqa sabaa samawatin wa min al ardi mithlahunna li ta'lamu. I done it so I can know that you, ala kulli shayin qadir. وأن الله قد أحاط بكل شيء علما أن that your knowledge encompasses everything وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدوني and that I can worship you this is the reason why so let's be a nation a people that really step up towards this tawheed and you know really establishing it and we can only do it through knowledge <coughs> and one last benefit we have to finish it's been very long I, another thing is seeking knowledge it allows the community to strive it allows Islam, the nation, to be a nation that's uplifted. Then what happens? Allah is not going to destroy us. وَمَا كَانَ رَبُّكَ مُهْلِكَ الْقُرَىٰ حَتَّى يَبْعَثَ فِي أُمِّهَا رَسُولًا يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِنَا وَمَا كُنَّا مُهْلِكَ الْقُرَىٰ إِلَّا وَأَهْلُهَا ظَالِمُونَ Zulm, what's the biggest form of zulm? Ash-shirk. Ya Bunayya, inna shirk ala zulmun azim. You are not going to seek knowledge, you're not going to know Allah. You're going to fall into shirk. Then Allah is going to destroy us. So this and seeking how many knowledge How into the shirk We see people who are mm. Imams falling into shirk Then what do you say about the, 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 the Their followers So the point is the, the society The community Is held upright We are a community That are going to strive We are a community That are going to be Safe from the punishment of Allah We are going to be a community That Allah is going to give Authority to on this earth So let's all go back To this reason We're here The reason why Is so we can know Allah And seek knowledge And worship Him until we meet him. Subhanallah. Wallahu wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barakatuh. Alayhi Muhammadu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah. Bihamdika. Shadunallah. Ila ila ila. Astaghfir. Khatu ilayk. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Guys. Barakallahu alayhi wa barakatuh. We want many things in life. But one thing that summarizes all that we want. Is we want good. We want goodness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran. How we can all acquire goodness. Primarily in the next life. Which is what really counts. Right. Because what point is there if you had so much good in this world, but in the next life, you are a loser? In Surah Ali Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرِّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you will never, you will not reach goodness. You will never acquire it. Until you spend for the sake of Allah out of that which you love. When this ayah came down, there was a companion of the Prophet ﷺ who owned a beautiful garden. And it was very beloved to this companion. The moment he heard this ayah, he wanted to implement it straight away because although he had a beautiful, lovely garden, he knew that there was a greater good, which was the garden in the next life, the garden of Jannah that he wants. So he came to the Prophet ﷺ and he gave it in the cause of Allah. Like if you deep it for a second, when you love something, you spend money on it. You love your children, you spend money on your children. You love yourself, you spend money on yourself. But you're supposed to love Allah and Islam more than all of these things. How much have you spent in Allah's cause? The Prophet ﷺ had companions there that were willing at the drop of a hat to fund whatever cause it was that was needed to be funded for the sake of Allah. And we today, in similar fashion, are reaching out to you. If we can get a hundred people to give 50 pound at the link below, you can help us in getting closer to our next target. And if you can't give 50, give 50p. Remember what the, Allah said in the ayah. وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ بِهِ عَلِيمٌ Whatever you give from good, Allah knows. You may give 50 pound, you may give 50, you may give 50p you may get 5p. But that could be the reason for you to enter paradise. With that said, please click the link below and we're going to carry on doing what we do. But we need you, with Allah's permission, to do what you need to do. And that's to support the cause of Allah. Assalamu alaikum. Peace.